Good evening. Thank you very much for coming to tonight's Celebration of Excellence. I'm Mark Larson, Superintendent of Schools, and on behalf of the School Board and Administration, I want to welcome you to the Celebration of Excellence. What a great night. Thanks for being here. Students, congratulations on this remarkable achievement. It really is impressive what you've done. Families, likewise to you, congratulations as well. And teachers and staff, congratulations, but also thank you. Thank you for what you've done to engage the students in your curriculum or engage in their lives. Thank you for challenging them to do the best that they can do. And thank you for inspiring them to greatness as evidenced by how they've done today. What a great event. Students, as you progress to your next academic adventure, I hope you'll remember this story. It's a, an experiment that was done by Tom Wilczek and it involved three different groups. A group of CEOs, a group of lawyers, and a group of kindergarten students. And the project was probably something that you've done in other classes somewhere along the line. Each group had 20 strands of spaghetti, a yard of masking tape, a yard of string, and a marshmallow. And the project was, was to build the tallest freestanding tower they could with the marshmallow on it. And they only had 18 minutes to do it. Well, the CEO spent much of their time jockeying for a position and worrying about status, and they started late. The lawyers were very nitpicky about the rules and so forth, and they never really got going either. But the kindergarten students, in addition to being adorable, jumped right in. What the findings of the story were, and this is from uh, Kevin Ashton's book, How to Fly a Horse, it's a book about creativity, was that he came up with these conclusions. The first one was, is that the kindergarten students didn't care. They didn't care about credit. They didn't care about status. They didn't care about recognition, and perhaps most importantly, they didn't care about being wrong. But here's what they did. They had fun with the activity. They treated it like a challenge. They applied trial and error, and they, were afraid of make, they weren't afraid of making mistakes. And I think the most important thing from this book is that the love of status, or the love of power, or the fear of failure, or the fear of being wrong can paralyze us. Rather, we need to act like the kindergarten students and act with courage. And as you move on to your next academic adventure, my wish for you is continued success, but also courage. The courage to be wrong, the courage to fail, the courage to take a chance. And like the kindergarten students, the courage to treat your next academic challenge as a challenge and have fun with them. Congratulations on this remarkable achievement and enjoy the meal. And one other thing, if you haven't had your picture taken with the teachers, do that sometime during dinner. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the 2017 Celebration of Excellence. Tonight, we join together to recognize our students that are in the top 10% of the class of 2017. Each student here tonight has invited one educator that exemplifies excellence in education and has had a positive impact on their lives. And for a student at Matamida High School to only pick one staff member, it's not an easy task. I'd like to thank Dr. Larson for joining us tonight and our school board members, Kevin Donovan and school board chair, Lucy Payne. Each year at the Celebration of Excellence, we ask Matamidai's Teacher of the Year to speak. And tonight, I am honored to ask Miss Anastasia Eldridge to be our speaker because she has taught mathematics at the high school for 30 years. She and her husband, Tom, live in Matamidai and they now are not completely empty nesters because they have their two dogs, but their son and daughter graduated from Matamidai High School and her favorite hobbies are napping, gardening, and boating. Ms. Eldridge states that she loves this community and she is honored to be a part of it. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Eldridge. What an honor it is to be here in front of such an outstanding group of students and teachers and parents and community members. I would like to start out by thanking the Celebration of Excellence Planning Committee that year after year puts on such a wonderful event for our top graduates. From raising the funds 
to planning the menu and building the flower arrangements. Your efforts are appreciated. 1982, 35 years ago. That's the year I graduated from high school. And like many of you, I thought I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. All through high school, I spent my summers working at Camp Friendship, a camp for children and adults with cognitive disabilities. I found the work challenging and rewarding. So when I went off to college, my intended major was special education. At freshman orientation, the professor who was assigned to my small group happened to be a math professor. He noticed that I had a strong high school math background and a strong math ACT score, and he suggested I take Calculus I first semester. I thought, what the heck, and I did it. During that year, I realized that I had found my true love in life, <laughs> mathematics, and here I am. Since mathematics and calculus are my passion, I would like to talk about calculus this evening. I have some visuals to go along with my speech that you can check out there. That's me. <clears throat> So I would like to talk about calculus this evening. Right now, the students in the room are moaning and saying, thank goodness she is not speaking at graduation. <laughs> there are two major branches of calculus, the derivative and the integral. I would like to talk to you about the integral. The symbol for the integral is this. It looks like an S because it stands for sum. Integral means add up an infinite number of. Many of you know that, right? Yeah. A basic application of the integral is to find the area of an irregular shape. One of the most important theorems in all of mathematics, the fundamental theorem of calculus, reveals the shocking calculation that can be used to find this area. But if the conditions of this theorem are not satisfied, the best one can do is approximate the area using a process called a Riemann sum. The concept of a Riemann sum is to add up the areas of many small rectangular strips to approximate the area of the region. The sum of the areas of many small subdivisions results in the whole. Students, each of you are an integral. You are the sum of many lessons and experiences. As you prepare to leave your family and Monomedi High School, for the next exciting adventure in your life, it is an appropriate time for you to reflect on the people and experiences that have contributed a re rectangular strip to your Riemann sum. The people and experiences that have made up your integral. The first rectangular strip is your parents. It is impossible to list everything that they have done for you to help you grow into the person you are today and will be 10 years from now. Before you leave for college next fall, take the time to think about their influence on your life and intentionally express your gratitude to them. Also, understand that the end of this era in your life is also an end for them. So be patient with mom when she gets weepy and cries. <laughs> Many rectangular strips 
are made up of your classmates, teammates, friends, peers who have shared 13 years of your journey with you or one semester or sports season. Soon, your integrals will diverge. <laughs> but you should always value the times you have shared together, learning, competing, laughing, and growing into the person you are. Your teachers. Each of them have added a rectangular slice to your development. In a Riemann sum, the rectangular strips do not all have to be the same width. The teacher you invited to join you tonight has added a rectangular strip with a greater delta x than the others. A lot of math nerds in the room. <laughs> also know that there are teachers who have taught you whose contributions you do not yet realize their significance in your life, but you will in retrospect. The father of calculus, Sir Isaac Newton, said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. The giants whose shoulders you stand on are all the people who have contributed to your integral. Some of the pivotal experiences that have added to your Riemann sum, making a team, getting cut from a team, getting a job, losing a grandparent, making it to a state tournament, moving homes, learning to drive, your first love, your first A minus. <laughs> it's probably for me. <laughs> Cherish those memories and the value that they add to your integral. Who has made up my integral? First and foremost, God, who has blessed me abundantly. My parents, my teachers, even my seventh grade science teacher, Sister Doris, whose comment on my report card said, disruptive to the learning process. Yes. <laughs> The professor at registration who suggested I take calculus, his one small act changed the course of my life. My students, they, you, are truly amazing. My students are the reason I find such joy in my job and I love coming to school every day. Smart technologies. <laughs> I was born again as a teacher when I got my smart board. And through the generosity of MAFE, I'm continuing to learn new ways that I can use it in my classroom. My colleagues and school friends, past and present, I have learned from them and continue to learn from them. And the last rectangular strip that makes up my integral is my husband, Tom, and my children, Alex and Emma. They alone know and truly appreciate how much teaching math in this community is who I am and what I am meant to do. One of my favorite quotes, which is on one of the posters in my classroom, it's from St. Catherine of Siena. 
If you are what you should be, you will set the whole world ablaze. I believe that I am what I should be. I was born to be a teacher. My hope is that each of you will find what you should be and how you will set the world ablaze. Be open to the direction and the influence of people and events that will determine the end behavior of your integral. I was born to be a Zephyr. We are all Zephyrs. Each person in this room contributes a strip to the sum that is this great Matamidi community. So, it wouldn't be a speech from Mrs. Eldridge if we didn't all stand up and celebrate our Zephyrness by singing the school song. Ready? March, march on down the field, fighting for MHS. Crash through that crimson line and straight to the end. Let's give a long cheer for MHS. We're here to win this game. All the other teams will fight to the end, but we will win. M A H T O M E D I. Matamidi, Matamidi, go! Thank you so much, Anastasia. That was wonderful. Our student speaker tonight is Alex Kardashian. Alex Kardashian is a leader for our Real World Design Challenge and our rocket team. He's also an officer for our National Honor Society. An interesting thing about Alex is that he started his own business called AMK Race Products during his grade 10 year and has since continued to run and grow the business. He's been interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics throughout high school and has taken as many fab lab classes as possible. After high school, Alex will be attending Purdue University and pursuing a degree in engineering. Join me in welcoming Alex. Well, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Nickleby. And uh, Ms. Eldridge, I always knew you were a fantastic calculus teacher. But I guess you're a fantastic public speaker as well. That is one hard act to follow, but I will do my best. Okay. There are 1,309 high schools in the great state of Minnesota. But I believe that we, as students, have had the privilege of attending one of the best. Now, I don't say that because we have some of the best standardized test scores in the state which we do. <laughs> Nor do I say this because we have an amazing Chautauqua Fine Arts Center or an amazing football stadium, which again we do. I don't even say that we have, are one of the best schools in the state because our sports teams take us to the state competition almost every year. At the end of the day, what's really important to a school isn't the sports or the buildings or any of that stuff. What's really important to a school is the teachers. It's the teachers that make the learning community of the school absolutely great or not so great. In our case, our teachers have made Mamiya High School absolutely top-notch and well-deserving the Blue Ribbon um, honor. So what is it that makes our teachers so great? Well, I've thought of three main things. Here's the first. Our teachers are available to the students at any time of the day, not even on school days. To this point, I have a very short story to share. Earlier this year, I was in a computer coding class. We were all working on a code. It was fairly difficult. Even Mr. Oswald was trying to teach us it, and he couldn't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> all hour we struggled on this code. <laughs> You're welcome. 
So we went home that night, and we were all quite confused. Well, I spent about five hours in the code that night, starting at 4 o'clock and finishing at around 9. I was so excited that I finally got it that I just had to email Mr. Oswald. He happened to be at a wrestling meet. I knew this, but I just wanted to tell him. Not five minutes later, no way, you got the code? <laughs> I just thought this was really important to me because it showed that he was willing to put in the time and the energy to email me back, not with a question or a concern or, or an emergency of any kind, but just because he cared. And it isn't just Mr. Oswald. That's just the story I chose to share. Every teacher is willing and able to do this, and every teacher has done this for one of us at some point during our careers in high school. The second point that makes our teachers so fantastic is that they go beyond the job description. Now again, I could think of a thousand examples for this, but I have a time limit, so I'm trying to be fairly concise. Every teacher runs, runs a website. You probably know about this. They have helpful links, they have helpful videos, they have all the assignments if you miss class, they tell you what you're doing every single day. This isn't something because they're forced to do it. They choose to do this to help us. Also, many of you, like me, have come in on a weekend and taken an AP practice test. This was monitored by a teacher. Again, this teacher had no requirement to do this. She chose to do it out of her own care for us. And lastly, this great event we're at. No teacher is required to come to this. They choose to do it beyond their job description because they truly care about us students. And that kind of leads into my third point. Our teachers, most of all, are the greatest in the state because they take such a personal interest in our lives and care so much about us. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked what college I'm going to, how my business is doing, just how my daily life is going. And the most incredible thing about this, it's not by teachers that I had senior year or junior year. It's by teachers that I had freshman or sophomore year too. And think about that. Between me, or since having me, they've had 900 students maybe. They still remember my name. They still remember my aspirations, what I do in life. It's because they care so much about uh, me. And not just me, it's each and every one of you. The fact that you're here today is because the teacher cares about you and you care about the teacher. And that's why I'm so pleased that this event is the way it is, that we get to bring a teacher to it. Because it really helps strengthen that, strengthen that bond and connection we have with teachers. Now normally at this stage in a speech, I would come up with some clever or witty statement to, to, to summarize my theme. <laughs> I would then say thank you very much and accept some light applause. <laughs> but that wouldn't do the speech justice or the teacher's justice. So today I want to do it a little bit differently. I think as students, we can all agree that we are not the only reason why we're here today. It's also the teachers that have allowed us to grow and develop that we're here. So I want to ask every student, and why not parents, to join me in giving a big round of applause to all the teachers that really are the reason why we're here today. Alex, thank you so much for that speech. We do have some fantastic teachers and obviously wonderful parents and great students and we're so lucky to be part of this event, part of the community and part of our school. We just really appreciate everything everyone does. So thank you all so much for that. Well, at this time, it's time to recognize each student and honored guest. And I would like to invite Superintendent Larson and Principal Nickleby to congratulate each student and educator. Please come up at this time. All right, and now I would like to invite Madison Bell and her honored guest. <laughs> well, <laughs> Miss, Miss Julie Donovan to come to forward and receive recognition. Maddie Bell was in my fifth grade class in 2010. Maddie had the most sincere eyes and was always smiling. She took school serious and worked very hard. She was the girl in class who everyone liked and got along with. She's the type of student all teachers dream of having in their class. 
The thing that I remember most about Maddie is that every August, after she graduated from fifth grade, she would come to my class and help me decorate and get set up for the new fifth graders. It wasn't just one year after fifth grade, it was many years. I was lucky enough to have her brother, Sam, and this year I have her sister, Mary. It is very obvious that the Bells have a loving family with great values because every one of their kids that I know have the same wonderful traits. It is clear that Maddie is still hardworking because she's in the top 10% of her class. I am so honored to be here with Maddie Bell, my dream student. I am so proud of you, Maddie. Good luck in your future. Would Kennedy Bergren and Mr. Bill Mauricio please come forward to receive recognition? In my short time coaching Kennedy, I have seen firsthand her dedication to her teammates, school, and the community. Many times after practice, she will stay on the ice to work with the younger players, helping them to improve their individual skills. This is only one example of how Kennedy gives back. She also shuttles many of those same players to practice, after games, or to team carbo loads. Kennedy is a tireless worker. She is definitely one of the hardest workers on the ice in practice every day. Her work ethic is contagious and shows our younger players what it takes to strive for success. Kennedy is a great leader, but best of all, she is a great friend to her teammates. Kennedy, as you transition to the next chapter in your life, remember, never give up on your dreams, even when the road becomes difficult. You are destined to do great things. I know this because you have already touched so many lives with your work ethic, dedication, and the way you care for others. Riley Beskar and her guest, Mr. Dan Murphy, please come forward. I'm at home during the summer, and I never, ever, ever even think about checking my school email. I mean, seriously, what's this going to get me? Mr. Murphy, Jimmy's final percentage was 93.6892%, and if he could just... I have to reply. Mrs. Smith, this is a good opportunity for James to learn about being prepared, a small sacrifice in ninth grade science that will lead to the greater good that he has in his future, and of course, I add with, and it was an honor to have James as a student in my classroom. But for some reason, I do check my summer email, and there is an email, and it's from Riley Besker. Uh, I open it up, and I read this, and Mr. Murphy, I just want to let you know that I was out on my bike ride today, and I realized that this was an example of the gyroscopic principle. Well, I thought, Riley, this is why we're celebrating you tonight. You see that there's a reason for learning your material. It's not just for doing good on your tests. There's a world out there, Riley. Use your education and enjoy it. Stephanie Drager and her honored guest, Miss Janine Nelson, please come forward. <laughs> staff, staff, staff. I knew you had potential when you first walked into my AP US history classroom. Even though it was super hard to get you to quiet down and stop interrupting everyone. Hmm. <laughs> Just kidding on that one, Steph. You actually quietly sat there absorbing as much as possible. You were diligent, hardworking, and even occasionally laughed at my bad jokes, which is always an added plus. It has been a joy working with you in multiple classes and to see you grow. I truly look forward to seeing you achieve your goals as you get ready to embark on the next leg of your journey. Best of luck, Steph. Margaret Freckling and her honored guest, Ms. Beth Riefus, please come forward.
Maggie has a lot of strength. Maggie also has a lot of maturity. Maggie has a smart wit and a sense of humor about her. She's determined and not afraid to fight for something. She's the kind of person who, if she's told she can't do something, will focus her eyes, work harder, and do it twice as well, just to prove you wrong. I was lucky enough to throw a little bit of science into her path as a sophomore, and again this year as a senior. I'm excited to see where your path leads, Maggie, because I think you will seek out some pretty amazing challenges, and you'll find a lot of satisfaction in taking them on. Congratulations, Maggie, on the success you've created during high school. Elena Geibel and her honored guest, Miss Angela Helley. Elena, what an honor it is to have been chosen by you. You are an incredible person inside and out. I have been blessed as a teacher to have had you as a student. I do not know where to begin talking about the many, the many incredible qualities you possess, so I will highlight a few. First, your academic ability combined with your work ethic has brought you here today to receive this honor. As a teacher, I truly admire your academic success and intrinsic motivation. Your incredible drive and passion for learning are just a couple of the many amazing traits you have. Secondly, I admire and appreciate your sincere personality that is hard to describe in words. Kind, selfless, giving, thoughtful, respectful, fun, and mature are just a few of the words that come to mind when thinking about you. You have a wonderful smile and a joy that fills any room you're in. You are truly altruistic. Yes, I had to use a psych term. The compassion you show for others and your kind heart stands out to those you are around. I'm so proud of all you've done here at Matamini and cannot wait to hear about what's next in your life. I've been blessed to have had you as a student and I'm thankful to be here with you today. You have left an incredible legacy here at Matamidai and will continue to make an impact on the world just as you have done with me. Acadia Hegedus and Mr. Jim Lane. Acadia, your sense of wonder and curiosity of the world is one of your greatest strengths. It challenges others, myself included, to be compassionately aware of our actions and relationships. The great conservationist Rachel Carson wrote, The gift to each child in the world should be a sense of wonder so indestructible that it would last throughout life and as an unfailing antidote against the boredom and disenchantments of later years, the sterile preoccupation with things that are artificial, the alienation from the sources of our strength. Acadia, as you move through life, continue to question the unquestionable, challenge your reality, continue to share your experiences and passion for learning with those around you. You have an open, or open horizon before you, Use your curiosity and innate sense of wonder to explore and expand your own and our collective horizon of knowledge in all directions. Thank you and good luck. Annie Hoffman and her guest, Miss Sarah Lornson. I'm thankful to have the chance to talk about what Annie Hoffman has meant to me this year. I've had her as a student in my AP literature class, and Annie is that rare combination of brilliance, curiosity, enthusiasm, and importantly, humility. Annie takes risks in discussion. She's eager to learn from others and test out her ideas. We've all learned so many new ways of seeing the world in this class because of Annie. She's the kind of student who makes me work to be a better teacher. She reminds me that the roles of teacher and student are reciprocal and overlapping, that I have as big a role to play as a student as I do being a teacher in my classroom. Annie reminds me to cultivate those aspects of curiosity, enthusiasm, and humility that will make me a better teacher and student.
Annika Shu was unable to be here tonight, but we'd like you to hear what Mr. Miley has to say about Annika. Hi, good evening. I apologize that we both cannot make it tonight, but I'd like to thank Annika and the Shu family for um, presenting this honor as um, the staff member that she selected. I appreciate all that she's brought to Monomita High School for developing not only students, but staff and myself. Where is Annika Shu? She is at Duke University with her family. However, in my mind, you know where she is, everywhere in this room, in your smile, in your laugh, in your twinkle, in your eyes, in good times and bad times. She is what makes the future so bright. Her love, her hope, her faith, and joy in all people and all things. Thank you, Shu family, for this gift of Annika. Safe travels now and always. Alexander Kardashian and his guest, Mr. Brian Farmer. Let's see, Alexander Kardashian. First met him as a 10th grader when he was taking my chemistry class. Young man was quite up for a challenge then, and since then, over the next three years, he's continued to take on every challenge I've thrown his way. From taking on the University of Minnesota physics class to stepping into leadership roles in both my real world design challenge teams and rocket teams, and excelling at both. Alexander Kardashian has been a great, great student of mine over the last three years and has stepped out of every challenge, including even losing to me multiple times at Backgammon. Caitlin Leach and her guest, Miss Ann Gary. It is such a pleasure to know Caitlin Leach. She is a determined, enthusiastic, fun-loving student who has brought so much energy to our Spanish program. When I think of Caitlin's personality, one word comes to mind, outstanding. Even before she was a student in my class, she stood out as a student eager to practice her Spanish, taking advantage of opportunities to speak with me and other Spanish speakers. Caitlin's determination and optimism are contagious and bring out the best in others. When I had her in my Spanish 4 class, I knew that I could expect the highest quality work from her every day and that her efforts would reflect her remarkable enthusiasm for Spanish. One thing that's really special about Caitlin is that last summer, in 2016, she was a volunteer for the Amigos de las Americas organization. This is an organization that sends young adult volunteers to Latin America to work in service projects in rural areas. Despite the immense commitment required for the program, she participated in six months of training and spent most of her summer in rural Panama. The courage and leadership necessary to be successful in such a challenging program are things that are truly admirable about Caitlin and something that few people, young or old, would be willing to attempt. I would like to thank you, Caitlin, for adding so much creativity and positivity to Spanish class and inspiring me as a teacher and person. Erin Leaf and her honored guest, Miss Nancy Brenning. When Erin Leaf invited me to be her guest at this lovely event, I was thrilled. Erin is an outstanding English student, but in addition to that, she has done so many other things. She's proficient in Spanish, having taken college in the school of Spanish four and five. She hopes to have a career in the biomedical science field and will use her Spanish, as she says, to help those people who are not able to communicate very well in English. In addition, she has been a volunteer at a local Animal Humane Society facility in the dog adoption program. 
She delivers Thanksgiving meals to families in the Meals on Wheels program. And in order to make earn a little bit more money for college, she has worked at a local garden center and has ba been a babysitter for a family uh, with children ages two and five. She's an all-around wonderful young lady who I know will have a very successful career. Casey Linares and her honored guest, Miss Debbie Driscoll. What I love about Casey Lenars is her attitude and her excitement about everything she does. Casey loves to learn. I often heard her say, I love math, it's fun. One day in the gym before the state meet, our assignment on beam was called distraction beam. Distraction beam is when her, your teammates make a lot of noise and try and make it difficult for you to do your beam routine. Instead of worrying about how difficult it might be, Casey said, I've always wanted to do distraction beam. Casey is detailed oriented, which is what makes her an excellent student and athlete. Casey is on the path to be one of our future leaders. We all are very proud of you and wish you the best as you conquer your new life goals. Isabella Ludwig and her honored guest, Mr. Dan Kazar. I have known Bella for the past two years as both her teacher and her coach with the swim team. And in that time, I have rarely ever seen her without a smile on her face. As a student and an athlete, Bella is a tremendous leader among her peers. Most memorably, Bella has always been great at motivating people around her whenever things start to get difficult, usually with a well-timed joke or just dancing to whatever music happens to be playing. I remember once before the biggest swim meet of the year, when most of the girls are nervous and focusing on their races, Bella was jamming out to music and teaching everyone on the team new dance moves. She even got the coaches in on the dancing. It instantly created a more relaxed atmosphere and the team had a great meet. Bella's positive personality is infectious and part of what makes her both a successful individual and a great person to be around. It was no surprise to me to hear that Bella was accepted into her top choice of universities even with one of her references submitting his letter through the wrong system. Oops. I wish you luck next year, Bella, and know that you will be successful in whatever you put your mind to. Go Badgers. Marcella Manival and her honored guest, Miss Carly Vale. I've had the privilege of working with Marcella this year as her NHS advisor. Marcella has proven herself as a defined leader throughout the time I've known her. She's the most dedicated, caring, and accepting student I've ever encountered. As a new NHS advisor this year, I didn't really know what I was doing, but Marcella had no reservations with taking the lead and working with me as the year progressed. She faced a few challenges within this year of NHS, and the, even though she may not agree with me on this, she handled them with grace and proved her dedication to our organization. Marcella is an overall rock star. She juggles academics, sports, band, volunteering, and participating in many other organizations, and somehow she does it without any complaints. She's a bright star, and I am so excited to see her shining future. Thank you for having such a positive impact on everyone around you, Marcy. You'll be truly missed at MHS. Josephine Marchant and her guest, Miss Stacy Fesser. The year Josie was in my class was a particularly challenging one, so she quickly became my go-to student. 
the one who could be depended on to get a message swiftly to the office, the one I could pair up with the left out student, the one who would help others in need with a joyful heart. She was the type of student of which teachers dream of having a classroom full. She was a hardworking eight-year-old who possessed a strong sense of self-confidence and perseverance that has obviously carried her to where she is today, one of the top 10% of her senior class. I am in no way surprised by this accomplishment for I saw the writing on the wall 10 years ago. We can all be optimistic about the future as we hand it off to kind, compassionate, and smart young leaders like Josie. Congratulations on one of the first of many accomplishments waiting for you as you continue to follow your inner compass. I am humbled by your suggestion that I have made a difference in your life, for I have seen the difference you have made in others already. Ben Nelson and his guest, Mr. Matt Oswald. Congratulations, Ben. It is an honor to be here tonight to celebrate your achievements and growth as a young man. I remember coaching you as a youth wrestler in Stillwater. And now, here we are to celebrate your excellence at Matamidi High School. As your teacher and coach, I have enjoyed motivating, challenging, and teaching you, helping you reach your goals, both academic and athletic. In addition, I would like to thank you for your leadership on the wrestling team's takedown cancer events over the past two years, raising over $4,000. Way to go. Ben, you have a combination of intelligence, desire, and passion. You will use these qualities in the future to make dreams come true for yourself and others. Good luck, aim high, and pin to win. <laughs> Grace Newmiller and Mr. Chad Garls. I knew Grace and I would have a special bond from the day that I met her. I had been offered the job as choral director at MHS, but had not stepped foot into the classroom to teach. Grace had agreed to be one of the band students that would sing with the choir on our biennial trip to Costa Rica in the summer of 2015. During that process, Grace had dubbed me Garl Master and always seemed to be there every time I turned around. By the end of the 11-day trip, Grace had announced that she would be a shared student beginning in her junior year, meaning she would participate in both band and choir. In the two years that she's been involved in choir, the amount of growth has been amazing. Grace has gained a whole new confidence in her singing ability, and her vocal skills have flourished. When Grace is in band on alternating days, her presence in the soprano 2 section is definitely missed. This year, Grace even auditioned for our newly founded a cappella group and was selected and auditioned for her first high school musical production and is in the, in the cast and ensemble. But my favorite memory of Grace might be the evening I found out that her name might not necessarily match her physical aptitude. The concert choir was singing a piece with movement in our fall concert. Grace was standing front and center, and when she jumped, she began to fall back, almost knocking over everyone around her because she grabbed onto the robes of the people on either side of her. What is great is though Grace is extremely hardworking, focused, and driven, she can laugh at herself and is a genuine and caring person. I know that I am thankful every day that Grace had such a good time singing in Costa Rica and had decided to make choral music a part of her life. Trey Newman and his honored guest, Mr. Keith Newman. My memory of having Trey in class involves the end of the year map testing that we do to measure students' progress. Trey had performed very well in geometry that year, including acing quite a few of the chapter tests. He was definitely one of the top kids in my class. When it came to the map test in the spring, I had challenged the class to see how well they would do, especially in light of all the new learning they engaged in during that year. 
including the trigonometry that's on the map test that generally nobody knows how to do in the fall, but are pretty competent come spring. I had a special challenge for Trey later that night as his dad instead of his teacher, but I questioned his ability to perform, telling him, you don't take your time on map testing, so I doubt you're going to be able to reach this challenge. Well, for anyone that knows Trey, he's a competitive person who likes challenges, which brings me to the end of the second day of testing. When students finish the map test, they generally call me over to show me their score. As they're waiting for me, they also put their hand over the screen as to not let others see their score. Well, Trey was doing just that, but also had somewhat of a giddy look on his face as I was walking towards him. When I arrived, he kept his hand on the screen a little extra time. After leaving me in suspense for about 30 seconds, he pulled his hand away from the screen and revealed a score of 297, which to this day is the highest score I personally have seen during my teaching at Matamidi. I've also had the privilege of serving as Trey's teacher in a different classroom, that being his coach in basketball. Trey is the best example of a team player that I've been associated with in my 25 years of coaching. He truly loves his team and wants the best for it. He's willing to accept any role that is given and is truly more happy and excited for the team success rather than individual success. When I think of Trey as a student in both settings, I'm going to be able to share stories for years with future students about the way Trey has influenced me as a teacher. Congratulations, Trey, on your great work. Jane Nicholson and her guest, Miss Jackie Halverson. Jane, I still remember getting to know you in Charlotte sophomore year in English 10 Honors when trivia crack became the craze. I believe that I may have played you in a round or two, and I probably lost. Those were tough times because you were waiting to get your first smartphone. So you had to constantly use your iPod and your dumb phone to cover your social life. Personally, I thought, way to go, Mr. and Mrs. Nicholson. You're teaching your daughter the value of delayed gratification. Jane, you were so much fun to have in class. You always had some story about a crazy Jane moment. In fact, one of those stories became a really funny speech in front of class. And underneath all that crazy Jane humor was a drive to succeed that consistently impressed me. You always had everything done done well, even with confirmation nights and downhill skiing practice. When NHS came around and you wondered if you should be an officer, I laughed in my head and thought, please be an officer. I knew you'd work hard, and that is exactly what you've done. Jane, enjoy this night and this moment. You deserve it. You've achieved it. I know you're going to do really well at Colorado College Way to go, and thanks for inviting me. Jillian Olson and her honored guest, Miss Lisa Ersfeld. I have had the pleasure to be Jill's coach over the years. One of the things she has shown me is that it's easy to have a good attitude even when you are doing difficult things. I admire her work ethic for school, extracurriculars, and her leadership skills as a track captain. She is someone who brings joy to all of those around her with her sense of humor, her awesome dance moves, and her smiling face. The quality about Jill that I will always remember is the smile she has whether she is hanging out in the commons or doing a workout. She is always smiling. Whatever you decide to do in the future, you have all the qualities that will make you successful. I will miss your impromptu dance moves and your smiling face. Best of luck in your endeavors. Thomas Richardson and his honored guest, Miss Anastasia Eldridge.
It is my honor to be here tonight with all these fabulous young men and women, especially my date for the night, Thomas Richardson. I first met Thomas when he was a sophomore in high school, shortly after his family had moved to Matamidi from England. Thomas approached me about wanting to accelerate himself in the math curriculum by studying pre-calculus independently over the summer. I gave him a textbook, a list of learning targets, set a date for him to come take a placement test to assure mastery of the content, and sent him on his way. But not without warning him that in my 30 years of teaching at Monomeda High School, I have had a number of students try to do this but none had been successful. In August, Thomas came to take both the semester one and two final exams for pre-calc and scored higher than any student who had taken the course the previous year had scored. That guy, he's my date tonight. Thomas is brilliant, a hard worker, and an absolute pleasure to teach. I look forward to seeing where life leads this young man. Thank you for inviting me to be your guest tonight, Thomas. Your guest tonight, Thomas. Maggie Rearman and her guest, Miss Jenny Merthen. I'm honored to have been chosen by Maggie Rearman for this celebration of excellence. She is an awesome student who always goes above and beyond the requirements in the class for Spanish. Uh, For example, in our grammar class, they had to write an original ending for the Don Quixote novel that we had read, and hers was just top-notch work. She went well beyond the requirements. um, And she's also exceedingly responsible and organized. When she had the state tennis tournament this fall and they were missing lots of class, you never would have known it because she was so on top of it. And she always made sure to check in with me and get her work. She's just a fantastic student, and I wish her all the best. Claire Redker and her guest, Ms. Edie Schmidt, who is unable to be with us tonight, but will share her thoughts. I am so honored to be chosen to speak to you about Claire Rotker, who I've known since first grade. Some of the adjectives that describe her as a first grader are probably still words used to describe her today. Creative, driven, quiet, bright, conscientious, methodical, and kind. Claire produced high-quality work in school because she was not in a rush to do something quickly. Rather, she preferred to take her time and do it well. Claire was a leader, but more of a quiet leader. She would take everything in and then lead by example. As you can tell, she was an excellent student with traits like the ones I've mentioned. However, the thing that really stands out in my mind from many years ago is the kind of person she was, her character. Claire had heart. She was perceptive. Claire always wanted to be helpful and do the right thing. She had empathy and cared deeply for those in her life, especially her brother Blake. She always looked out for him and wanted to be a caretaker for him. I can't wait to see where that big heart of hers takes her in life. Sarah Sames and her guest, Mr. Matt Huss. I sure hope that I'm not going first because Sarah might not be here. I had her in first hour, and she wasn't always there on time. But when she did show up, things got really interesting. It all started when she was a freshman in my first hour world history class. Sarah was taller than most of the boys, smarter than most of the boys, and had most of the boys' attention as she went through the year. 
I knew Sarah had the potential to be an outstanding student. I knew that she had a gift to share with the rest of the students at Matamidi High School. And now since I've seen her as a senior, I know that she has fulfilled a lot of her goals that she has set in her academic career at Matamidi High School. I know she has some big goals that she's going to pursue as she goes off to the University of Wisconsin at Madison. The one thing about Sarah that a lot of people don't know is Sarah has a huge heart. I know that doctors have been studying it over the past few years, but the one thing I do know about Sarah is she loves people. She loves to work with people. She's sympathetic and empathetic towards other students, which we don't always see in our competitive world uh, of high school. But Sarah is one of the smartest kids I know. She's one of the nicest kids I know. And she has one of the biggest hearts I know. I'm very honored to join her tonight to celebrate her success. And I look forward to seeing what she can offer the world in the future. Danielle Schoenecker and her guest, Miss Wendy Grand Leonard. Danielle, I feel so honored that you've chosen to invite me tonight as your guest. I feel fortunate to have had you as my student in art all through middle school, and then to be able to catch up with you again as a 10th grader in culinary arts. You have always been a favorite of mine because you consistently are excited to try new things. You give 100% effort. You're not afraid of a challenge, and you do it all with a positive attitude and a smile. You're so soft-spoken and so such a good student that it would be easy for you to get lost amongst the kids yelling for attention or help, but your sweet personality always would shine through. I look forward to hearing about your future plans, and I am expecting you to do great things with your life. Nicole Schrantz and her guest, Mr. Mike Moeller. Reflecting on my first interaction with Nikki Schrantz four years ago as a freshman in band, I recall that my initial impression of her was that even though she appeared to be a quiet student, there was a great intelligence and strength modeled through her actions. Quickly, I learned that Nikki Schrantz would become a leader through very loud actions. In leadership terms, Nikki demonstrated then and demonstrates today that she lives her life through quiet determination. It has been an honor to learn from and teach Nikki every day in my classroom for the last four years. To observe and be inspired by her constant perseverance and persistence as she pursues her goals in both music and life has been incredibly empowering as her teacher. There are many examples that I could use from our time together that demonstrate this, but the greatest one is that Nikki is a fabulous clarinet player who had an accident with a crochet hook. My greatest fear for her was that she would not recover in a manner that would allow her to continue to share her gift of music through her clarinet. I should have known that Nikki would have no problem making a recovery and that she would be ready to go and continue along her music and life journey. In the words of Maya Angelou, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. Nikki, I have confidence that you will never be defeated, that you will continue to grow as a person, and that if you encounter setbacks, you will handle them with a the quiet determination, persistence, and perseverance, and continue to thrive. Joshua Schaefer and his guest, Miss Kelly Schaefer. It is my pleasure to celebrate and congratulate Josh Schaefer for his excellence at Matamidi High School. 
Josh was in my seventh grade life science class. It is a real rarity to have a seventh grade boy so focused on doing well, whether studying for a test, working on a cell model project, a polio puff cereal box project, or a dissection of a heart. He had grit and curiosity. It wasn't just about the grade for him. He wanted to understand and would persist until he did. He worked hard in my class. When doing chores at home, as he is my son as well, not so impressively, I remember asking him how could he work so hard at school and then come home and be satisfied with stuff left on the carpet after vacuuming. He said to me, Mom, school is important. It was a proud moment for me as a teacher, but not so much as a mother. He definitely carried this attitude over to all of his classes since then, working tirelessly on research papers, models of brains for psychology, calculus problems, chemistry and physics lab write-ups, probably just like every other student being celebrated. School is important. Here's hoping to continued success in college and beyond, and maybe someday he will be more diligent in his chores as well. Lisa Sicard and her guest, Miss Angela Buckingham. I'm happy to be here tonight as a guest of Lisa Sicard. I was lucky enough to have Lisa as a student in my American government class last year. Her class was one of my all-time favorites. When I first met Lisa, she was pretty skeptical about the class content, but I'm fairly certain that by the end of the class, I had changed her mind. Lisa grew to become an active participant who was brave enough to share her opinion with the class. I could always count on her to be engaged and involved in every class activity. Her dedication and confidence were a positive influence to everyone around her. Our discussions would often continue after class, and it's clear that her interest in law and political events have changed after our time together. Lisa, congratulations on your recognition this evening, and thank you for including me in the celebration. Your intelligence and ability to balance a challenging course load while participating in athletics and volunteering is admirable. As you move on, remember to continue to challenge yourself and remain confident. Embrace the unknown and keep smiling. Good luck to you next year. Cheyenne Simpson, and her honored guest, Mr. David Wald. Cheyenne, it has been tremendous working with you these past three years. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for my misspelling your name over that time. Please do not take this as a sign that I'm not your biggest fan. Instead, think of me as an even bigger fan of the capital city of Wyoming. On the bright side, Cheyenne with an A, you are far more intelligent than the city of Cheyenne. You also work much harder, while the city of Cheyenne just sits in the middle of Wyoming doing very little. Also, despite your awesomeness, you are very humble, while the city of Cheyenne thinks that it is the best city in Wyoming when everybody knows that Sheridan is where it's at. Cheyenne, thank you for being a tremendous math student, a marvelous math team member, and the best lunch and learn student this school has ever seen. Good luck in the future, and go Tommies. Alexandra Wilson and her honored guest, Miss Jane Martins. Because Allie is so very witty, I made up this little ditty. I met Allie when she was in third grade, a fast and wonderful friend I made. That friendship remains through all of these years, shared humor, some laughter, some hugs, and a few tears. We made it this far, my golden-haired friend. This connection we have has no end. Please keep me apprised of all of the latest, 
I will always believe that you are the greatest. I'll say it out loud, Allie. You make me so very proud. Megan Wintz and her guest, Dr. Kelly Wilkie. I had the great opportunity to work with Megan in my chemistry classroom last year. I would use the following words to describe Megan, intelligent, hardworking, generous, and creative. Megan's efforts in my classroom are always consistent and excellent. In addition to excelling at her own academic efforts, Megan does an exceptional job working with others. Megan was frequently grouped with different students throughout the year, and she consistently led by example in each group she was a member of. Megan is also a dancer and mentor at the Inspirational Performing Arts Center here in Matamidi. She tutors middle school students, volunteers at a camp as a camp counselor, and is in the National Honor Society. As a parent and community member, I have a younger daughter that is a part of the IPAC Dance Studio, so I've witnessed Megan's leadership and role modeling to young dancers firsthand. This is a very special dance studio that elevates art and inspires others above all else. Megan's greater than 10 year tenure at this special place says a great deal about her genuine character. A great student, mentor, and hard worker, what a powerful combination. I'm confident Megan will continue to find great paths forward and will contribute as much to any path she chooses as she receives. Good luck in all that you do, Megan. Wow. What an amazing group, huh? I think that's just, we have some wonderful students and again, some wonderful educators and parents and um, this night is always a surprise and a great surprise and just so impressive to hear all the different things that our students are doing and, lear and the, the learning that goes on with all of our educators. As you know, this event would not take place without the efforts of many people who generously give of their time and whom I would like to now thank. Nancy Brown, the assistant to our principal, she coordinates and takes care of the numerous details involved in preparing the event. The Celebration of Excellence Committee members, Lauren Langen, Alice Smith, Lael Romaley, Missy Ward, Kari Munson, and Kathy Nickleby, for the countless hours spent working to coordinate the evening and for making this celebration so elegant and so enjoyable. A.J. Fossen, who manages the technology and who has greatly improved our program. Gray Seaver and Arlen Becker, who work behind the scenes, making sure our technology runs smoothly, even when there's a little glitch. <laughs> our National Honor Society students, Sydney Morse, Julia Ferher, and Andrew Cryer, they have given of their time this evening to help us keep things moving and organized and help greeting our guests. Thank you so much for your time as well. You know, we, I mentioned all of the people that we need to thank, but I think we should give them a round of applause and I neglected that, so let's do that now if we could, please. Tonight is a celebration of the excellence of the class of 2017 and their commitment to education. The excellence of our educators and their commitment to students. The excellence of our parents and their commitment to our district. The excellence of the Matamidi School District to prepare our students for their future. Thank you for the great honor of working with such outstanding educators and students and thank you for being here tonight. Good night. <laughs>